Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Matthew Vermeer. I'm here to talk to you about uh, our systematization of knowledge, a framework for asset discovery. So let's talk a bit about reconnaissance. Here in the top left, we have the uh, cyber kill chain as ubiquitous in network security. Now, the first step in this uh, famous kill chain is reconnaissance. Now, if we look at one of the most popular uh, network security books in the world, we see that one of the first things that they talk about is network reconnaissance as well. Similarly, looking at the Certified Ethical Hacker certification, you see that this, this exam guide, chapter two, one of the first ones, also talks about reconnaissance. Finally, we have um, frameworks such as uh, MITRE's attack framework, which uh, contains just uh, the whole collection of techniques that adversaries can employ against an organization in order to attack it. The first step in this framework is to perform reconnaissance. So it's very clear that uh, reconnaissance is a crucial component in any red teams or uh, attackers processes. And uh, it's very obvious, of course, because att attackers need to know what it is they're attacking uh, before they're actually able to attack anything. Similarly, uh, defenders need to know what it is they need to defend if they are to properly defend and secure their network. So on the defender side, this is usually referred to as asset management. And what happens here is uh, usually whoever knows more about an organization's network has an advantage over the other. So it stands to reason, of course, that uh, proper asset management is the bedrock of good security posture for an organization. So much so, in fact, that asset management has been included in numerous cybersecurity frameworks, such as the NIST cybersecurity framework here uh, on the side, where uh, one of the first blocks in the framework is, of course, asset management. Also, the ISO uh, IEC standard uh, 27001 requires organizations to uh, keep a list of all of the assets uh, that are related to information or uh, information processes and keep uh, this list updated uh, over time. So when we're talking about asset discovery, it's uh, important to specify exactly what we mean with both asset and discovery. So uh, as assets, we see all network identifiers. So these can include addresses, uh, FQDNs, DNS zone contents, among others. And then when, uh, when we say discovery, we mean when the, the existence of such an asset uh, associated with the specific organization becomes known. Now, it's important to note here that for this work, we decided to focus on assets uh, that are discoverable through external network measurements only. So we took this process of asset discovery and we um, modeled it here in this, uh, this flowchart. Uh, the assets, you can see in the um, notes here, the yellow notes, network identifiers is an asset and network services are assets. And then the discovery methods, are the edges that connect the nodes to each other. Now, of course, you can see here that we have an organization node on the left-hand side and a network service characteristics uh, node on the right-hand side. Of course, the asset discovery um, process begins with determining the organization for which you are going to perform this uh, process on. But since organizations are not assets themselves, we uh, leave this out of the, uh, the technique itself. And of course, uh, network service characteristics, such as version numbers and specific misconfigurations of the software, are not assets themselves, which means that um, we decided to scope those out of the uh, search process as well. So I'm going to talk a bit about how we actually performed this uh, systematization. So uh, extracting or finding these techniques can be uh, quite challenging because these techniques are scattered throughout the literature and they're not explicitly advertised as asset discovery techniques. Um, usually they're developed by researchers as a means to an end, like just 
to find a um, spe specific result that those researchers are looking for at that time. So what we ended up doing is just taking 14 major security uh, and networking venues over the time span of five years, which is from 2014 to 2019. Uh, we ended up scouring through over 4,100 papers from these venues. And in the end, we were able to uh, select 93 papers from which we were able to extract um, net, uh, asset discovery techniques. And we did that in a very straightforward man manner because we found that uh, for every asset discovery technique, uh, an asset is taken as input, it's processed in some way, and from that process emerges a different asset. That is how we looked at these asset discovery techniques. And um, going back to the flowchart, I'm just going to uh, explain uh, with a simple example how this works. So here at the bottom, we have a sample of the systematization table that you can find in our paper. And if we take one of these rows, which is one as uh, asset discovery technique, Let's take this third row here. We see that it's an edge two technique, which means that it's going to be talking about this edge right here. It takes an IP address as an input asset, which is a network identifier. It performs a ZMAP scan on this IP address here in this edge and then uh, performs some additional signature analysis um, from the banners that it fetches from this um, IP address. And from that analysis, it is able to determine whether a honeypot is running on that particular IP address. So what would this look like in practice? So imagine that you have this top level domain that is protected by a cloud-based security provider, and you want to determine the real IP address that is behind um, all of the web servers. Uh, in this zone. So you take the domain, you execute a, an S query, which is a H2 technique on that domain, which yields you the name server responsible for that domain. Once you have the name server, if you're lucky enough, maybe this name server uh, gives you the possibility to execute a zone transfer, which is a, a H3 technique, which then yields you the a complete list of subdomains within that zone. With this list of subdomains, you can then perform an A or quad A query for all of these domains, edge one, uh, which then you will do the entire list of IPv4 or IPv6 addresses. With these addresses, you can execute the edge two technique of ZMAP scanning, specifically the ports 80 and 443, to get the web servers corresponding to those IP addresses. And if you investigate the web servers uh, themselves, the web uh, pages on these servers, and you find that these uh, uh, web servers have the functionality that uh, to trigger outbound connections, you can trigger such a connection to one server that you control, which then uh, ultimately reveals the real IP address of this web server. So in conclusion, uh, as asset discovery techniques are constantly evolving, new techniques might be developed and never discovered by researchers. So they remain unavailable to them when they need to um, perform some research that uh, requires such techniques. So this framework can then assist these researchers by providing a number of uh, different techniques that have already been developed, uh, which prevents them, of course, from having to reinvent the wheel all over again. And finally, um, as, uh, we can also assist future researchers with this work by providing framework that can be easily and uh, continuously extended as technologies evolve. So with that, I want to thank you for your attention and I hope I've encouraged you to uh, read the paper and I'm uh, looking forward to any questions that you might have. Thank you very much.